Okay, so welcome to our new Ocean Baker showcase video where we're going to show you how to use the new toolset for Waterline Pro 6.1. So, first of all, if we navigate to the 9 Ocean Sim Beta folder, we're going to find a brand new folder called Ocean Baker. Let's open this up and we have a bunch of new assets including the Ocean Baker and we're just going to show you how to do it. So we actually have a couple of demo levels that are meant to get you quickly started and quickly testing all of these new features. So let's just open up the main one. And right now the Ocean Baker works with the Gen 4 Ocean and something we need to do first for a brand new project is just open up the Cascade Manager and make sure that over here we have enabled this uh, cascade 2 gonna hit apply save it and close and right now we could start simulating some of our ocean a lot of the settings here are preset but if we hit live ocean we get a little bit of an ocean right now it's frozen and that's because we have enabled time override this is something that will be now controlled by the ocean baker and for the sake of doing things let's just uh disable override time and see a little bit of our ocean and right now we could also disable run cascade 2 and this is the actual ocean that we have so in order to bake down an ocean we need to be running at least two cascades fft uh, ocean simulation type needs to be an fft simulation and fft simulation needs to be a variation of the philips spectrum and once we open it, we have a bunch of parameters here that we can tweak. And let's just make a few small adjustments and make the ocean uh, look a little bit more interesting. So something we can do is, let's see, let's make the ocean amplitude at 1. Or maybe 2. Let's get a spikier looking ocean. 1, 4. Wind fetch, let's set that to 0. Uh... Offset scale, set that to 1, give it a little bit of a directionality, 0, 1, or 9, 9, 9, something like that. See if we could adjust it a little bit with wind fetch. And let's say that this is something that we're happy with. A couple of things we need to note is that we need to take notice of the wave amplitude here. And right now we could just uh, save and close this. We're not gonna save it right now, but there we go. Next up, we can select our ocean baker and we have a bunch of settings here. And we need to actually input our ocean amplitude here so it knows what we have finally settled up. And ocean preview and everything is great. Let's prep our ocean for capture. And for that, we need to enable override time and make sure our second cascade is enabled here as well. Finally, it's we also need to make sure that the ocean tile, wave height and steepness are identical in cascade 2 and cascade 1 over here. And now that the ocean is live and everything, we can go to our um, ocean baker we could disable this and sort of get a flat plane and adjust the height a bit so it's something like so although the original map is quite well prepped for this and we could capture our ocean and you could see that a bit of an animation starts playing on the ocean a bit and this is how long it takes it basically now it's done just to be safe after making changes to any of the ocean parameters it's good to run the simulation twice like so and then we have a final result over here that we could just search uh, we could open this up if needed and basically it looks something like this it's now a flipbook texture but we also have a preview result which we can enable here and just quickly have a look that everything is working as expected so we could see that it is having no artifacts it is tiling seamlessly the displacement is looking pretty good although this isn't something you should worry about as the displacement can be adjusted later on and so can the speed and everything right now we're just looking that there are no issues with uh, it's sort of uh, what would you say uh, the the repeat it's repeating smoothly and what we could do now is go to our ocean preview map over here so let's open this one up and over here we have a pretty much the same ocean with almost the same materials and the only difference here is that we have set it to baked ocean simulation let's go to our baked ocean here so this is the results from the other level that we have over here 
we're gonna right click and create static texture. So this is just a quick one and we're gonna drag and drop it in here. Uh, just to make sure we're not running a second cascade on this particular ocean. And right now if we're not capturing, we can open up this uh, cascade manager again and disable cascade too. Let's just save it. And now we could run our live ocean. And there we go. Right now, the same ocean as before, but this time it's no longer simulating in real time, but rather it is reading off the flipbook texture. Mm -hmm. In here, we have a bunch of other examples here that we could just drag and drop. Now for this one, we probably need to adjust the ocean height a bit, something like five, and probably the normals a bit over here to something like 0 0.9. And there we go. We have another normal looking ocean. So under regular circumstances, so long as you don't adjust the tiling or the height too much in the preview map, this is the quickest and easiest way to adjust it, to capture an ocean. Because in the end, you can also adjust the tiling and height over here. Once the simulation has been captured, we could slow it down a little bit and we could increase its height uh, more. So maybe 15. And there we go, we have some pretty good results. So this is the quick version, the really quick way of getting you started. And, after, and now we're gonna go over a more complex workflow. So let's hop back into our map and look at some of the more complex workflows. So for example, you wanted to adjust a few other settings. So for example, the ocean tile, even though this wouldn't really make a difference, but let's say for the sake of argument, we use something like 6,000, we adjust the scale of the ocean and let's just uh, tweak this a bit and we could see that the location of our ocean capture has been updated we're gonna disable the results so we have a nice flat plane of where everything should be next up in our ocean let's just disable the run cascade number two and override time so now the ocean is animating properly so a couple of things that we that we have done in our ocean to set things up is that we have one um, Philips Spectrum uh, simulation and if we open it it looks something like this so here we could start tweaking all the parameters that we want except for this particular instance we need to have ocean time baker mode off now if we go to our second cascade which we can run here and we need to have and we've put in basically a material instance of this material instance so if we open it it looks something like this. Now here we've kind of overridden the wave amplitude. We really shouldn't be doing this and now things are looking good. So the way that we have it is that you could see that the parent of this material instance is this one. So any changes we make over here will get automatically replicated here. The only difference here is that we have enabled the ocean time bake mode. And this is basically like a couple of extra um, bits of data that get passed between the ocean and the ocean capture actor. So any changes that we make here, for example, if we change the wind fetch size to zero, uh, right now it looks like it, it hasn't been updated, but during capture it will. So things are looking uh, quite good. Let's, uh, let's make a more chaotic kind of ocean with lower with more evenly spaced out waves so we don't have these large sort of swells uh, for this we're gonna lower the wind speed to something like five eight maybe six something like so we can also adjust the normal maps a little bit to match better to what we're looking at here but overall we're quite happy with this Next up, let's make a few changes to the wave height. Maybe set it to five. This is looking pretty good. Four and adjust the steepness to something like eight. Get really nice, sharp looking waves. We don't want anything too sharp. So the waves are sort of uh, folding on each other like 20. We're, we'll be start to getting some artifacts here. But so far, something like eight looks pretty good. Maybe we could push it to 10 and yeah things are looking good now we have made a bunch of changes to these settings here and these particular ones we need to replicate in our second cascade we have also disabled all of these sort of micro displacement and additional features we need to make sure that our ocean simulation uh, resolution is set to 520 by 520 ocean frame rate isn't really too relevant in this case 
and we need to make sure that basically these settings are the same. So we adjusted the ocean tile here to 6000 and we're going to set it to 6000 here as well. Next up, wave height, we changed that to 4 and steepness we set to something like 10. Ocean resolution is set to 512, this is great and we've already have the same sort of a, a setup here with the um, uh, Philips Spectrum ocean simulation type is set to FFT and these micro displacements here are disabled as expected. So things are looking pretty good, we can hop over to our cascade manager and make sure that it is actually enabled, the second simulation. And this is gonna make the ocean look a little bit different, but uh, don't worry too much about it. It's It will all sort of work out in the end. Now we can enable override time and basically the ocean uh, capture actor will take care of this. Now, a couple of things that we have made to make the capture process a bit easier, but you know, let's just run it now and see what happens. So right now you could see that our ocean became a bit more flattened out like it was before and things are looking good. Let's see how things are. Let's preview our result. And things are looking okay-ish. Now you could see that we have an issue with the uh, looping in that we're getting an error over here. So a quick way to fix this is to capture it again. So right now we have our preview plane running while the capture is still happening. So it's gonna cause some weirdness. And things are looking good now. We don't have that horrible sort of a flicker in there but we also have a couple of parameters here that we can adjust the tiling a bit for our preview so something like this you might get a few squares here that's not something to worry about too much this is more of an artifact with the preview mesh this is more to give you a rough idea we can adjust the displacement a bit more make it spiky more flattened out but overall it is looking quite good now something else that we would recommend is that the ocean itself should use the MI Surface Gen 4 Bake. Uh, it is located in um, Baker Materials. In fact, all of the materials are here. So you have the Philips Spectrums that you should be using, uh, the, the water surface material for the bake, and this is something for the preview that we use in the other map. So this is looking pretty good, but um, we actually were hoping for a few issues here that we could show you how to fix. So for example, we have a couple of whoops, parameters over here and let's just show them off a bit. Uh, ocean amplitude, we actually did change it here. So let's see what values did we settle with? Oh, 0 0.5. So things are looking actually quite good. We don't need to change it here. Uh, we can adjust the capture length for how many seconds. So we can actually capture something like maybe 10 seconds worth of animation. But ideally, you'd probably want to have something a bit five or less. We're going to show you why this is. And you could kind of already see it happening because we have a finite sort of space in our flipbook texture and capturing a longer period of time over this makes the animation go faster. You are capturing more information but it's being kind of squished down into the same place. So if we want to fix this, we need to lower our preview speed to something like 10 or maybe even five or eight. But right now you're starting to see a little bit of choppiness in the overall uh, flip book, the animation here. It's not looking that great. If we go for a very low value of something like three seconds of animation, let's capture the ocean again. And now we're getting a very detailed uh, sort of animation over a shorter period of time. So it's going to be a lot more apparent when the waves repeat themselves. But it's looking very great. Now we are slow we've slowed the animation way down, but we're still getting a ton of results. For example, if we go to our regular pre preview speed of 20, we could see that the ocean is kind of slowing down a bit. Generally, the default results that we have here are pretty much the best you could want. So. You can make some small adjustments, but if things go south, you, could, you should be able to always revert to these. Finally, we have a couple of parameters here for depth and offset, and that basically controls the, well, depth capture of the um, ocean surface. It kind of factors in the location of the uh, ocean baker itself. So for example, if we go to something uh, really low, so we would want it to so this would be a bad idea. If we start capturing here, we will be missing some information where the ocean pokes through this mesh. 
So let's just uh, demo this sort of issue that you might be running into. And if we were to show the result, yeah, it's pretty much what you would expect. Let's go with something a bit higher. So ideally, we're still getting a little bit of a poke to through over here, maybe a little bit like so. And let's capture the ocean. So now that it's done, let's do another preview. And we could see like a few weird things have happened in terms of the details. We're getting some square artifacts over here. So to avoid that, it's better to sort of have it a little bit higher. Let's run it again. And that is sort of uh, cleared up. Something else you might encounter though, is if we were to adjust the, let's set the depth offset to zero and just capture it again. Well, our ocean seems to have captured nothing. And that is because we could go to our uh, capture preview. And this is the sort of uh, a little bit of a preview sort of render target of what is actually being captured. And here we could see that if we start adjusting the depth a bit more, we could sort of see the ocean. So what is the correct settings here and how what sh should they look like? Well, ideally, you'd want to be avoiding pitch black areas or completely white areas it should be more or less gray. So for example, if we have these settings and capture something like this, we're getting basically holes in our ocean or flat areas. These would be the black spots that you get over here. If we go with something overexposed, something like this, and capture the ocean, you, whoops, it's actually looking better than expected, but you might be getting sort of peaks that are a bit too flat. You're not going to be getting the full sharpness. So ideally, you'd want to have um, a nice sort of fix. Now here we were adjusting the settings mid capture, which is why we have this horrible jump. But if we capture again, and just let it the full animation of the ocean play through until it stops and things are looking good. So these are a bit of a balancing act. Ideally, you'd want to have something like this, a little bit of darks, a little bit of um, lighter areas, nothing completely white or completely dark. And let's just capture it again. Now it is worth having a look at the animation as it plays out, as there are sometimes peaks or valleys in the ocean that can look completely dark during the animation. And you could also preview the final result over here. And things are looking quite well. Right now we could just hop over to our preview over here and we're not noticing any of these sort of holes that appear so things are looking great but yeah this is something to keep in mind if you go with really high if you're capturing really massive sort of swells here and you start adjusting the overall ocean tile and ocean height and steepness ideally you don't really need to do these as all of these can be adjusted through the uh, Philips spectrum over here wind fetch wind speed and simulation scale can all be used to create massive looking swells, but over a tiny area. And this will sort of save you messing with a bunch of these parameters over here that we just showed. So yeah, this is pretty much how you could create your very own ocean. Right now, the Ocean Baker only works with FFT in the Philips spectrum. And yeah, it's a great way to optimize your ocean. If you sort of have a background ocean without any fancy uh, features you can innate you can disable the simulation you could disable the buoyancy and just have a really nice looking background actor that is your own so yeah go make awesome things